I just found a crazy hack for vibe coding using ChatGPT's agent mode. It can literally log in on your behalf on platforms like Lovable, Bolt, and Replit and set the foundation for whatever app you're looking to build while you go grab a coffee. All you have to do is give one very detailed prompt per platform and once you're logged in, it can send the initial prompt, iterate multiple times based on the feedback loop with any one of these apps and by the time you're back from that coffee, you have something you can work with. Once you describe what you want, you can let agent mode take the reins and handle the prompt engineering on whatever platform you're looking for. You just have to describe what you want and agent mode will take care of the prompt engineering irrespective of the platform. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use this trick to take you from zero to building a proper foundation that you can continue building on. If you've ever wanted to vibe code an app but you had no idea where to start, this trick might help you a lot. Let's dive in. So if we hop into ChatGPT, you'll see that I've done this for Lovable, Bolt, and Replit, but you can apply this to any browser-based platform that you use. And like I said, we do have a very beefy prompt that I'll go through one example with you to give you the mental model of how to structure these kinds of prompts, and more importantly, how you can avoid writing them yourself. But before we get into that, let's take a look at the entire process of agent mode, logging into Lovable, sending the initial prompt, patiently, semi-patiently, waiting for Lovable to come up with V1, then V2, then giving some feedback until we're in a place where I can step in and take over and really start building. So if we click on this first part here, it's going to naturally initialize lovable.dev. And one of the most important things for agent mode is if you want it to go on a website, don't make it search for the website itself. Spoon feed it the URL. Once it does that, it can still sometimes still hallucinate, but you'll notice as I click through, it finally makes it to lovable on its own. And once I'm logged in, which you only have to do technically one time, once it's logged in, good or not good, it remembers your credentials. So the next time you go, it will remember you. And once it's loaded up, I didn't spoon feed it any form of prompt to inject, but it comes up with a prompt of its own through the reasoning, injects it to the view, and then goes and submits it to Lovable, where now we probably have to wait, or it has to wait, five to seven minutes before it sees the version of V1. And one thing I'll note here is it's really tricky to get agent mode to know when to be patient and when to take certain actions. So on V1, V2, and V3 of me trying this out, it would try to click everywhere because it didn't see any form of progress on screen. So it tried to click on the refresh button, the publish button, on the GitHub button, just because it didn't know what to do with its virtual hands. With the right set of instructions, you can start to condition it to be more patient and wait for the first version to spin up. And once it's loaded, it looks at the view, starts to analyze it the way a designer or a product manager would using its computer vision, and then injects the next natural step, which in this case is creating a form of a dark mode. And the next iteration it does, again, on its own, is decide that it has to improve things and add high impact features like smart task templates, time estimates, recurring tasks, enhanced mobile responsiveness with a question mark. It's kind of thinking as it's actually building it out. And after a series of edits, it starts to be smart enough to now look at the overall preview of the app in a separate tab to see what it looks like on a full screen and analyze whether or not there might be some new recommendations coming up. And after it peruses around, you could theoretically keep this process going. And because agent mode allows for some feedback loops, and you can see it continues to click around and test it, just like a quality assurance tester or a tester in general would try and break the app and see how it works. And after it's done, it actually gives us a report of what it's done, what it's looking to do, and what it could do if we gave it more time to do the next tasks. So again, depending on the prompt, you could make it go maybe another five, 10 minutes worth of iterations. But again, the goal here is not to build the whole app at once, at least not for now with V0 of agent mode, but really try and find creative ways to leverage your time and leverage its skill set to get you from zero to 20 to 30% so that you have something you can start building on. It's kind of like having writer's block where just having a few paragraphs on the screen might help the creative juices get flowing and allow you to build, or in this case, vibe code to the fullest extent. Now, if you take a look at the prompt that powered that short experience, you'll see it is pretty beefy and I won't take credit for being a prodigal genius coming up with this. If we take a look at the overall structure, we have the role assignment and expertise that you're an expert in AI specializing in full stack development, product design, and effective prompt engineering. We give it a mission here that it has to go to lovable.dev. We then reinforce, this is the exact website we're going to, and then the interaction capabilities, which is what it should look out for. What are the different things on screen that it should take into account? And like I said here and alluded to before, when you send your initial prompt to any of these platforms, typically the very first prompt takes 
extra time, if not double the normal time to actually generate. So basically giving it some form of a cheat sheet on how to be patient and hold its digital hands while it's producing the view. So here we say monitor constantly for visual changes like loading spinners, new UI elements and content updates. We have the sidebar that we tell it and instruct it on what to look for as well as the code change protocol. So with platforms like Lovable, Bolt, and Replit, you can physically see individual files being edited in real time, and that acts as another anchor point to tell it, okay, this is not done generating yet. And as an extra cheat code, you can just say, observe the stop button, because when you send your very first prompt, it's gonna go from a button that says submit to some form of stop to stop the generation from happening. And once it's done, the stop icon then becomes an arrow icon again, denoting that you can send yet another prompt to the program. Now, another area that happens a lot in the wild is sometimes you send a prompt that is very straightforward, and for whatever reason, on the first step, it completely breaks, meaning it doesn't actually render a view. So we give it some troubleshooting steps on how it could possibly deal with those scenarios. And in this case, we tell it we wanna build a life-changing productivity app, we wanna call it Task Zen, and we give it a series of our wish list. And again, we didn't create this ourselves, we had AI create it for us. And I'll show you exactly how I did that on lazy mode. So if I change screens, you're gonna see here that I recorded an 18 minute loom. Now, did I do anything special? No, I didn't even speak. If I were to play the sound on this, you'll hear a Beethoven background music while I was focusing. All I did was send a very vague prompt. And all I wanted to do is just show the process of exactly how Lovable works, how it behaves, what it looks like when it's spinning up a preview, just so that I can then, then, once it goes through building some version of this app, I then paused the video and downloaded it right here. And once I downloaded it, I wanted to upload it to a language model that could understand video's input. And I did this exact same process for Replit as well as Bolt, because each platform is very nuanced in the way it displays its loading screen in the time it takes to usually generate V1 and the iteration step. So each one needed a one-time loom. But once I had these prompts as a foundation generated from these videos, I was then able to extract that and apply that to whatever scenario I wanted. And all you have to do is download it and then you have a file on your computer that you can then go into AI Studio in Google and then click on something like Gemini 2.5 Pro. Since it has a million token window and videos typically, especially longer ones, even if you aren't speaking, take a lot of tokens to process. So you can go into here, go into upload file, and then you can click on that particular video. It will upload and extract all the frames that are processed as pseudo images one by one. And then you can send a certain prompt to be able to watch the entire video, understand the behavior of how in this case, lovable works and create a prompt to basically create whatever you want using all the tells and hints from the platform itself. And once it's done processing, which usually takes anywhere between three to seven minutes, depending on the length of the video, you'll see that you have the number of tokens here, which we're still in the safe zone. We should probably have another one or two videos we could fit into just this one chat. And you could send a prompt like this. So I have an autonomous AI agent that can take control of screens and browsers. I want you to watch the behavior of this particular tool called lovable.dev. And while you're watching the behavior, make a note for the different things that are happening in the user interface, especially when I go and submit the prompt, what I have to click on to submit it, how long it takes to actually get to the result, what's happening in the meantime while it's actually loading, and more importantly, what it looks like for me to iterate and send different prompts, as well as the response times to those prompts in the resulting user interface. So you can send that over as step one. It will quote unquote watch the video. And then after that, we can give it the persona of a prompt engineer to take the learnings of the behavior of the platform and help us craft the perfect or semi-perfect agent mode prompt. And then after a few seconds, it comes back with a full report on the different behaviors it saw, as well as the duration of time on average that it saw for going from a prompt to resulting response. Now what we can do is say, now I want you to take on the persona of an expert prompt engineer, and I want you to design a prompt that tells in a very instructive manner, this agentic tool, this autonomous agentic tool, exactly how to build a to-do list app within this platform called lovable.dev 
giving it a cheat sheet of exactly what the user journey will be, in this case the click-through journey as well as the waiting journey, just so it knows when to wait, when to submit and come up with a prompt, and has good guidance on exactly how to navigate the platform. And then you can send something like this, submit it, and then we should get a resulting prompt that allows us to, maybe if it's not perfect, give us 80% of the prompt we need to have agent mode do what it needs to do. And one thing is I'm showing you how to apply this primarily for vibe coding, but this exact process, especially using this AI studio plus screen recording video hack, you can apply to all kinds of browser based tasks that you execute on the day to day workflows. And then finally we get this prompt that has an objective, the platform name, the app name, the user journey, it says access the website, locate the central prompt input field with the placeholder, ask Lovable to create, enter the following precise prompt into the field. And then in this case, it's actually coming up with a prompt. And then it says submit and wait, gives it some guidance on waiting. And then you can see exactly what the process looks like to iterate and troubleshoot if troubleshooting is needed. If we move on to something like Bolt and we take a look at the underlying video and start at the very beginning, You'll see the exact same thing. It logs on to bolt.new. If we take a look at the result of the exact same process, but used on bolt in this case, initially you can see that it logs on to bolt. If we click play, it'll open the screen. It'll understand from its training that I gave it before, how to navigate that page, how to submit its first prompt and how to wait for the next response. So once it submits the response into this new user interface, it's a very basic prompt that says, build me an app that will allow me to replace a more beginner friendly version of Jira, which is a project management or more a task and ticket management platform. And you can see in its dialogue, it's monitoring the build progress because we have that training in the prompt to guide it to be more patient. And you can see it keeps waiting and I'm harping on this because it's fascinating to see it. Now look at the view for this feedback loop and stimuli on more anchors to be more patient and continue to be more patient. As you can see right here, it says, the spinner is still visible, indicating that the page is not done. So I'm waiting another 10 seconds, I'll keep monitoring the situation. And then in the next part, it, you can see it's going back and forth with Bolt, looking at the view, analyzing what is working, what's not working. And if we continue to click through, you'll see it's making recommendations, submitting more feedback and coming back with something that looks like a very decent start that I could come back from my beautiful coffee and keep on building from there. And the last one I'm gonna show you is the Replit process. Now Replit's a bit different from both of the first two platforms because it usually takes three to five times to be able to generate the very first iteration of the app. So with Replit, we had an initial speed bump where we were detected, very rightfully so, that this was not human traffic. So I had to step in, take over, just click on the verify, and then we were able to get to work. And the way that Replit works is a bit different in terms of the workflow. So if I just zoom in here, you'll see that once we submit a prompt into Replit, it goes and actually builds a full plan and roadmap as well as a preview of what the app could look like. And then we have to approve that in order to continue building the app. And this is what I was referring to. It spins up a visual preview of what the app could look like without going too much in depth. And then we have to physically approve the plan or in this case, agent mode has to physically approve the plan. It then understands that it has to approve the plan and then it will go and work for the next 10, 15 minutes. And this is the hard part. And this is the reason why this one took 20 minutes versus the others took 11 minutes and 15 minutes because it had to wait longer, be way more patient and endure the fact that Repl takes a bit longer on the very first iteration. After a few centuries pass, we come up with the initial UI, which, you know, in fairness, is functional from the very first iteration, meaning you can submit a request, it stores it in a local database, those components are set up, and then it sends one iteration, and then it basically completes its job. I basically told it in this prompt to send only one version of the iteration because I knew that to demo this, it would take 10 to 15 minutes just to get to the very first version. And that's pretty much it. And while this won't change your life overnight, it does show you that we are going into a place where maybe now it can take us from zero to 30, 40%. But in the not so distant future, it might become 80%. And who knows, in a year, it could be zero to 100% where you just enter the prompt and it goes and interfaces with the tool and builds pretty much everything and just reports back to you a full report of what it built and what it looks like. But until then, I'll make the first prompt I showed you at the very beginning using Lovable available in the first link in the description below. And if you want access to the second and third prompts where I trained it on Replit 
and Bolt. I'm making that available exclusively to my early AI adopters community. I'll see you in the next one.